So are you new to art journaling or do you have a pristine art journal that you're afraid of creating in? The first few pages in an art journal can be really challenging. It can be hard to know what to create, uh, which prompts to use, and even what to create about. So today I want to share with you a very simple art journaling page. We'll be using some acrylic paint, napkins, and a simple prompt to get those creative juices flowing. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hopalong Studio. So let's get started. So I'd like to share with you the journal I'm using today. This is a journal that I made. I'm actually teaching this right now in a class where we're learning how to create a book, bind a book, and create inside of it. And for this book, I chose to use some of the watercolor practice paper. So what I did with this is I've already added a layer of gesso, but I do want to show you how you can add a layer of gesso. So you want to try to put something in behind to protect the rest of your journal. Otherwise, sometimes the pages stick together. Sometimes you might end up having things bleed on top of each other. And that can be really discouraging when that happens. So I've added in a silicone sheet. This one's really well used, as you can see, uh, behind. But you can also use parchment paper. Uh, that also works really well. Uh, you can also use pages from a magazine. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can use that are not expensive for protecting your pages. And I'm just going to add a little bit of gesso to the surface because I am using it from my one liter bottle. Yes, I do do a lot of painting. That's why I have a one liter bottle of gesso. Most people will not need that much gesso uh, for your regular art journaling projects. But since I work on canvases and all sorts of other surfaces, I like having a really large bottle of it. So I'm just moving out to the edges. You're trying not to get the paint underneath onto the next page. So I tend to go a little bit thinner on the edges and just pull it out to the edges to hopefully prevent stuff from bleeding underneath. And because I am doing this on a watercolor surface, you'll see that a little bit of the purple there is still bleeding through. That's one of the things about reusing some paper is you need to realize that sometimes they do bleed or do other things, especially if you've used a watercolor medium and now you're adding something else wet on top. But for me, this was a really great way of being able to reuse some of these papers that I use in class. I often do a lot of my class practices on large paper. I ended up with a stack of about 20 sheets of watercolor paper that was really good quality watercolor paper that had already been used. But I could just paint over it by using a little bit of gesso and just adding that to the surface. And so you can decide on one or two layers of gesso. If you decide on two layers, let it dry first and then add your second layer of gesso. In this case, because I already added some gesso, I'm just going to leave it here and then start adding color on top. One thing I realized is I do have my binding here and I got a little bit of paint on my binding. If you don't want that to happen, just put up another piece to the edge here and that's going to prevent that from getting a lot of paint on it and that's just going to protect your surface. Because I want to keep this technique that we're doing today quite loose and I don't want to get really worried about uh, getting too precious about the edges or anything. So now that we have our gesso down, I'm just going to put my pellet paper right up here against my book. And I want to start adding a little bit of color to my page. I'm going to start with blue color. I'm using mostly pastel or very light colors for this. And you'll see as we go on with the napkin why you want to do that. If this was my first time, I would also choose to go quite light with my colors. So now we're just adding in a little bit of texture onto our page using a brayer. So you can see that just by adding in, there are some brayer marks there. You're getting different textures and feels. It's not all going down evenly, and that was kind of the point. You could get it that it's perfect, but in this case, I don't want it perfect. because so I want to start by adding layer on layer of paint. And you might go, well, I'm new to art journaling. I can't do something that complicated. Just give it a try. Um, there's no reason you can't have really cool layers on your very first art journaling page. And just make sure you, to keep the layers thin. If you go on really thickly, then you're going to end up with a really strong layer of paint. And that's what I'm trying to avoid here. So I do want to try to keep it a little bit light. And so I'm going to go on with another color. This is a turquoise green. And if you're wanting to see some different ways you can add acrylics as a base layer onto your art journaling pages, uh, check out the description below. I've included one of my videos about how to start backgrounds using acrylic paint, and I share a lot of different techniques that will give you kind of a baseline place to start when you're wanting to create on an art journal page. And then this one, I have an idea in mind with this layout. So I'm just adding in a few layers of green along the bottom. I don't want to go super dark with this 
I've been not been cleaning my brayer in between these colors just because I've been going from blues to um, a more of a green blue to more of a straight green. So I was gonna add in a little bit of white, but instead I think I wanna add in a little bit of this iridescent pearl. This is kind of a semi-translucent paint. I kind of like what's going on here because that almost looks like clouds in the sky, but I'm just gonna quickly just wipe some of the paint here off my brayer. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of this iridescent pearl. And what I love about the golden iridescent paints, these are not inexpensive paints, but what's really neat about them is they tend to have a bit of a color flipping attribute to them. So they look very interesting on your pages. And I put that on a little bit too thick. And if you find you've added something too thick, just come in with your paper towel, give it a little bit of a rub there. And you can see I'm pulling up that really dark space that I had. And there we go. So now, now I'm adding just a tiny bit of shimmer over adding in too much paint to my surface. And again, part of it too is I kind of go down and lift up, go down and lift up. I'm not just sitting there with a really strong roll of paint and that's on purpose. I don't want this to go too dark. And because I've gone a little bit darker than I want here, I'm gonna come back with a little bit of blue. I'm just gonna add that on top. A little bit more. But again, I'm going across my palette paper here just to thin it out a bit so that I don't add it on too thickly. So let's basically clear paint layer. That's all there is to it. Just add a little bit of texture, add a little bit of color, and then we move on to the next layer. And you just wanna make sure you let this fully dry before we move on. So now we're gonna talk about napkins. So these are just napkins that you can find anywhere. Uh, you can find them at your local grocery store. Uh, there's a place called Ninny's Napkins that does curate really beautiful art napkins that you can also use in your creative projects. A lot of these I've either purchased from Ninny's Napkins, I got from friends. Uh, my friends have started to realize that I have this thing about napkins. So if I'm at a party and they have nice ones, they make sure to leave me a few so I can play with them. I've had friends that are like, oh, I have a few left over from my Easter get together. And so I've ended up with like quite a variety of napkins without having to buy 25 or 30 of them and figuring out how I'm gonna use them all. I also get involved with napkin exchanges. That's another option. There's so many different places you can get your napkins, but these are really useful uh, focal art pieces for your art journal page. And if you wanna see my full video about super details about napkins, I do have an entire video that I have dedicated just to how to use napkins. And that one's quite helpful if you wanna use them a lot in your art. But for these ones, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how you can separate them. So I'm taking two pieces of masking tape. I know some people can do this without needing masking tape. I'm not one of them. I find that I can usually get the first layer off, but not the second layer. And so most napkins are made with either two or three plies to them, meaning that you have your surface image and then you have a white back. I find that sometimes I can separate them. I can usually get the first layer, uh, not too difficultly. Actually, I managed to get both layers off. And so you can see that we have two layers of white here. I'll take my two little sticky pieces so you can see this. So we have three layers to this napkin. We have two white layers and then we have our image layer. And you always want to separate these out. So that's gonna make a big difference in just how these images look on your art journal page. And if you move too quickly like I did, you can see you end up just tearing it a little bit. So just be really careful as you tear, work in little areas, uh, work a bit closer in here, and that's gonna help you as well, just to not end up with a lot of imagery that gets damaged. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one as well too. Um, so if you run into one like this where it's really hard to take apart, you just use your sticky to kind of help take apart that first layer. And then usually I remove the entire first layer. That first layer comes off easily. It's not next to that color layer, so it comes off quite fast. But the second layer you're gonna to need to be a lot more careful with. So this is how, this is what ends up happening with me with all these napkins. So you just basically need the sticky tape to help just get that started. And then you want to very gently pull the sticky tape off without tearing the napkin. But in that case, I did tear the napkin. Sometimes no matter how careful you are, you will get a little bit of tearing. But as long as you're careful, it's more these little edge pieces that you see with all that texture that can cause the problem is because it's to hold the napkin in place so that the plies don't come apart. At the same time, it makes it hard for you to take them apart. 
And you'll notice on this one, there is a fairly strong ghost image. And so if you wanted slight texture, like you can see even the tiny little butterfly shape there, that is a very ghost texture. It's hard to see maybe on camera, but it is quite obvious to me. And what's nice about that is now you can take it apart. And if you wanted just a little bit of texture, that was more of a ghosted texture, you can use that ghost image that you have from that second ply. It's a lot easier when you get nice and close. When you pull from out here, like I tend to do, you're gonna have a better chance of ripping. So I think it's just trying to be really careful as you do this, just to make sure that you end up with the image that you want. So now that you have your napkin, you'll notice that often it has the mirror images uh, from top to bottom. And so really, once you open it up, you really have this as an image and then this as an image. And so you need to often separate out these images. So I'm gonna be using this main image and one of the rabbit images. I'm gonna show you really quickly how you can take an image out of these without tearing it and without having any really harsh lines. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a paintbrush and a little bit of water from my container here. And I know I want to go from about here on. So I am just taking my paintbrush. Sorry, that had something in it. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. I must have had some leftover paint in there. It wasn't supposed to be pink. There we go. Now you can see the water, but at least now you can see where my line is, I guess, you know. Um, so we want to put a little bit of water along there. And now what you want to do is just very gently tear. Because what that does is it basically just weakens those fibers. So you get a really nice tear mark. And what's nice about this is any line that you have that's gonna be really harsh, like if you ended up cutting these with scissors, which you can, when you add it to your page, you are going to notice uh, that mark. It's not gonna be super noticeable, but it's noticeable enough that it's not something that I like to leave on my page. So what I tend to do is again, take the water, gently tear, and you wanna let this dry fully before you add it onto your page. Otherwise, it might just dis disintegrate when you're adding it with your medium. And now I want to do the bottom area. This side is going to be off the page or it's going to be lined up at the edge of the page. I'm okay leaving it as it is. But what I want to do is come along the bottom and I'm just pulling away a little bit of that napkin. And what that's going to do is instead of it being a really straight line that you're going to be very e easy for you to see, it's now going to be a imperfect line, which hides a lot better when adding this to your projects. And you might be wondering why I'm not going perfectly around things. I'll show you how you can use these napkins in your project and you don't have to have them all beautifully cut out to be able to get a really nice image. And so I'm just gonna do the same with the rabbit. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, click that like button. That is a way that helps this video be shared with more people. So thank you so much for your support. So now that we've dried and cut out our images, the next thing we want to do is add them to our page. And so how do we do that without ripping or damaging the napkin? So I'm going to add a little bit of matte medium into a container here. This container had aquarium plants in it, so you can really use any container. It doesn't have to be anything special. And I'm using a dry brush. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit to my brush. I'm just going to add a little bit underneath. I'm just going to gently lay this on top. And then just make sure that your napkin is where you want it. If it overhangs, don't worry too much about that. Now take your brush and a little bit of the matte medium and just gently dab and stroke it across. You do not want to be harsh with this. I'm using a very soft brush. If you can see, my brush is bending quite a bit with this. And so you don't want a harsh brush for this. And you don't necessarily even have to add medium underneath. You can just add the medium on top. I just like adding it in that one spot just to help hold down the napkin. And you can see some of these areas that have a little bit of that texturing will stay there. I don't mind it. I know some people that kind of bothers them. I don't mind having that little bit of texture on that edge there. And so we're just gonna work very slowly and methodically and just add this napkin onto your page. You'll notice that as it moves, I'm having some areas that it's buckling a little bit. It's gonna add up and leave a few tiny little lines I'm not too fussed with that. I don't necessarily have to have a perfect. 
Sometimes when you add large pieces of imagery over a really tiny image like this, you're gonna get a little bit more wrinkling. I'm okay with that. Um, if it bothers you, you could have actually taken this off in sections and added it in sections, but I'm not fussed with that at all. So let's talk about what our prompt is for today. I've been thinking a lot about the idea of intention and the year of the rabbit. That's part of the reason I have, have the rabbit here is I'm thinking a lot about what's my intention for the year? Uh, what is the one thing that if December comes, I'd like to say that I've changed in my life? This doesn't necessarily have to be a goal. It doesn't have to be, well, I lost a bunch of weight or I've done a particular thing. It can even be like, I found more joy in the year. Um, it can be, I ended up spending more time with friends this year. It doesn't always have to be accomplishing something. It can just be changing a habit. It can be just changing your life in some small way. My intention for last year was that I wanted to spend more time with my husband and I wanted to golf more. And so we made the commitment at the beginning of the year that every Saturday morning we were going to go to the driving range and or we would go golfing. And because we live in Canada, that means it's often driving range for a lot of the year and then golfing when the weather finally turns turns good. And to be honest, we had so much fun this year. It was not just about golf. It was about spending time together. It was about connecting and going for lunch and coffee often after we finished at the driving range. And it really was a great habit because it was every Saturday morning we had something that we needed to do and we got to do it together. And it wasn't work and it wasn't errands and it wasn't cleaning up things. And it was just really good, valuable time. And I realized just how important that was to my life. And we both look back at it and we we're so thankful we took the time to do that. So I really like setting intention every year. Uh, this is a little bit different than New Year's resolutions. I don't really like New Year's resolutions because the statistical chance that you're going to make your New Year's resolutions isn't very high at the best of times. And I think sometimes they can be set without having a lot of thought in mind. I like setting SMART goals and I've already set my goals for the year, but my goals are also very separate from my intention. So my intention for this year is from the Japanese word kaizen. And I might have completely pronounced that wrong. <laughs> I apologize if I did. And the idea behind that word, it means change for the better or constant improvement. But I've also heard it said 1% better every day. And I love that idea. The idea that in everything I do, I wanna be just 1% better every day. This doesn't mean I have to be the best. This doesn't mean I have to figure it out in a day, but it's that idea of this continuous improvement. I'm going to get a little bit better at art every time I do it. I'm gonna be a little bit better at all the things that I wanna try. I'm gonna to try to work on learning a little bit more. And so that's my intention for the year is how can I be in a place where I'm always constantly learning and growing? And what does that mean for me? Now that I've added in that first piece of napkin, I'm just gonna let that piece dry. I'm gonna to continue to add the rabbit. So you can see that even though this is white, as soon as you add it on top of the paint, that white goes away. And because we got rid of that stark edge, you don't see it. It completely disappears into the paint. And that's part of the reason I wanted to stick with light colors. If you do super dark colors, you won't be able to see these images even as it is. This is a little bit more muted than it would be on white, but I wanted to add in that color in behind. Because it is Year of the Rabbit, and I love my rabbits, I wanted just to add in my little rabbit in here as well. So I have the birds on top and I have the rabbit below. And you wanna use the same process. In this case, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of matte medium to the bottom. And you wanna make sure not to overwork the napkin too much. So you notice that when I was doing this, I wasn't going over it a bunch of times because as soon as it gets wet, then it's gonna start ripping the more times you go over it. So what I like to do with this one is I'm lining it up along the bottom and I am working upwards. And so I would really like to challenge you with this prompt for this page is choose your own thing that you want to do as an intention for this year. Maybe it's just being more grateful. It could be finding joy, it could be finding peace and understanding what that means for you. Does that mean getting outside more and spending more time in nature. Maybe it's just seeing more or less of certain people that are positive or negative in your life. Uh, I am a strong believer in what we focus on will grow in our lives. And so by choosing a prompt that's going to be something that maybe you wanna focus on that you've added to your art journal as something you wanna remember, that can go a long way 
for making that a focus in your life. So once this is dry, now these little edges that you have, you could probably just tear them off. I like using scissors, so just in case there's any areas I didn't get a perfect layer of matte medium on, it doesn't tear it and wreck your page. Instead, it just comes off. So at this point, we can make the choice just to add in our journaling and call it done, but I wanted to show you where you could take it just a little bit further if you felt like it. I still have my paint from before. I just added spit some water on it just to keep it liquid. And I'm just gonna add in some little marks. And this is where you could add in a little bit of other grasses. And this is where you could take in the sided palette knife and you could add in spots. You can blend it in with already what's here. So that's a way of having the image that you have kind of blend in with what you're already doing. Because now the rabbit looks like it's in an area that has grasses over an area that just basically has the image and then everything else. And that paint was a little bit wet, so it was a little harder to put on the side really evenly. In this case, you always want to use the back of your palette knife to add color. In this case, I'm just trying to use the side of it so I really want to try to get those marks. I want it to look like grass. In this case, I'm just going to add a little bit at the bottom. Now, this is where you could also go in a paintbrush and do this, but I like using a palette knife. It's kind of easy. It takes a little bit of working to kind of get it looking the way you want it to. And I'm not using enough paint, which is part of my problem. That makes me feel like he's a little bit more part of the scene. And on areas of here, I added almost a little bit too much paint. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of that blue. And if that's too much, like I feel like I did too much there, then you just dab a little bit of it off. Because so we're adding in layers. So the nice thing is we can also remove in layers. I'm just going to move down like that because what I want is I don't want it to look like it has an edge. We want to make sure that it feels like it's part of the rest of the background. And this is also where you could go in with a little bit of this luminescent paint. Like I have this pearlized paint here. It's still, I have it really watered down into a really nice little wash. And you could add in little spots to some of your tissue paper areas. The only thing is you do need to be careful because it is going to cover up the tissue paper. So you just want to make sure you don't cover up everything. You don't want to cover up the entire image. You just want to add in a few spots just to add some highlights. Again, all of this isn't necessary. If you're brand new and this feels like too much, just add your tissue paper, add your journal, and go with it. But I wanted to show you how you could take it a little bit of a step further if you're a little bit more practiced with tissue paper and you wanted to try something different. And actually, this little white area there around his eye, that just helps him pop a little bit. Those little highlights do make a big difference. And actually, I also want to do it to the catch eye of the bunny because the bunny has a catch eye there. So let's make his eye just a little bit brighter. Those little areas in there. I'm just going to rub a little bit so they're not too bright. I'm just painting some in, his little strokes along the bottom here. Just add some highlights into those grasses. And none of this is necessary. I just, I just can't leave things. <laughs> that's, that's part of it, as I really enjoy the process of just adding layer on layer on layer. So if you're new to art journaling, I was really suggesting one of these Stabilo All pencils. This is a black pencil. It will work on paper, glass, plastic, metal. Um, it is black in color. It is also water soluble. So you can do some very cool things with it in your art journal. So with this one, I want to add in a little bit of shadow. He looks like he's getting light from here. So I'm going to assume that this area in here is going to be in a little bit of shadow. So you might go, wow, that's way too much color, right? Um, but what we're going to do is go in with our water on our brush and we're just going to bring this out and you can see it gets really dark. So if that's too much, just pull it out, pull it up. And this is the nice thing is you go on too dark, you can always pull it up. And because we already have put down matte medium on this, we're protecting the surface and below. So we're not damaging the tissue paper. We're not damaging anything that's going on there, but we're able to add in a little bit of shadow. And so I'm just going to add in a few spots here. And so you can see that when it touches the water, it also adds in a little bit of interest there. So you can always just add a little bit of water and then just put your pencil into it. And I think it's always good to have just a little bit of black on your journal pages. It just adds in a little bit more interest to your page. And those areas I added in a little bit of this Stabilo. So now I'm going in and just again, adding in a little bit of interest here. Doesn't have to be a lot, but these little touches do make a big difference. So I feel like that 
makes him feel like he's a little bit more grounded in there. And again, if that's too much, you can always pull it up with your water, dab it off and move on. And so I'm just adding in just a touch there along the breast of the robin or the chickadee, I think it is. And we're just gonna add in a little bit of color there. And this is where that bottom branch, I put a highlight in there. We almost lost it a little bit. You can just leave it plain or you can just add in a little bit of your color. And the nice thing is because of the way this works, you can just add in your color. You don't even have to blend it out. That's the beauty of this pencil is it can be a very, just a dark color that you add in just to add edges like there that you want to just have that have a little bit more definition. You can also come across it again with your brush and just pull it out. And so it's a great way of adding shading. It's a great way of just adding a little bit more interest to your original page. And sometimes the big thing about original pages is finding that contrast. The black is a great way of just adding contrast and interest to your page and not have it overtake what you've already been doing. So I'm gonna add these wood stamps to the page. So I would usually just put them down because they're such tiny stamps. I would usually stamp the other way, but in this case, I wanna make sure that I'm just keeping the ink on the stamped image. And you wanna write everything backwards. Otherwise, you might start here and then realize you are out of two letters. <laughs> so that's the reason why I always start backwards, is that way I know for sure everything's gonna fit. So 1% percent being my butterfly better every day. And I really like the idea of that, that every day I try to improve something by just a little bit. And so you can see that by just adding a little bit of archival ink and stamping, you can also just hand write all the stuff in. I don't always handwrite. Sometimes I like to use stamps. Sometimes I like using handwriting. It really doesn't matter. It kind of comes down to personal preference. You could use word stickers. You can use really anything for this. So I know near the end of this video, I ended up getting a lot more into the details and that's okay. If you are new to our journaling and this is your first page, start by just blurring on the paint, add in your napkins, maybe just add some stickers or your own writing or a stamp to be able to add your phrase to your page. That can be enough. But I did want to show you where you could take it a little bit further, where if you've been using napkins for a while and you want to try something new, add in those highlights, add in those shadows, add the catch lights. You can do lots of fun things just to add a little bit more interest to this page. And so I really wanted to give you a little bit more easier version and where you could take it a little bit further, just so that everyone can get something out of this video. So if you've enjoyed what you've seen here, if you could like it, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I would love to hear your comments on this. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have any comments about this technique. I would love to start a conversation with you. So if you might be interested in seeing a little bit more about what I am doing and a little bit more about the courses that I offer, like how to do this book, please check out the link below that will sign you up to my monthly letter where I share a little bit about inspiration and prompts. I often include some freebies and it also lets you know about some of the classes that I am teaching and when I'll be teaching them both online and in person. And so if you've enjoyed this video, click here. This is another video about tissue paper and more specifically how to go into using tissue paper in different ways in your art journal. So I'll see you in the next video.